Okay, we're going to start the linear algebra portion of the course now. Um, <clears throat> I put up the textbook we'll be using. It's a free online text. Uh, I, I uh, put that up on uh, Blackboard, so you should be able to download that. Um, again, you won't need to, to print that out. We're only be looking at the first couple of chapters of that of that book. But the first chapter is on systems of linear equations. Um, and I know that you've probably encountered uh, systems of equations before. So the first uh, section of chapter one, section 1, 1.1, is an introduction. So we'll briefly review um, linear equations and define what is meant by the term uh, systems of linear equations. Um, so a linear equation, here's an example of a uh, a linear equation with two unknowns. Um, the unknowns here, using standard notation, our unknowns are x and y. Uh, this is a, a second order linear equation. Uh, again, the unknowns or variables are x and y. The coefficients are a and b, and the constant term is c. Um, you know, another example would be uh, an equation with three unknowns. A, B, and C will typically be uh, given as numbers equal to D. So A, B, and C are, are numbers. Again, they're the coefficients. Here we've got three unknowns, X, Y, and Z. Um, more generally, with N unknowns, uh, we tend to use the no notation A1, X1 plus A2, X2 plus dot, 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 plus A, N, X, N is equal to, to b. So this would be an equation with n unknowns, the, the variables x1 through xn, and then the corresponding a coefficients, and then b is the constant term. Um, a system, and these are of course linear equations because the variables just appear uh, as the first power. You know, x, y, there are no uh, x squared or x cubed or higher order terms or y, or there aren't even any uh, cross terms of, of the form uh, x, y. So uh, what's a system of linear equations? System of linear equations. So an example would be, and here I'll, I'll use one with numbers, uh, x plus uh, y plus z is equal to 3, and then a second equation relating x, y, and z. 2x plus y plus 3z is equal to 1 would be the, the a second equation. So multiple equations like this forms a system of equations. Um, a system um, may have 0, 1, or infinitely many solutions. Okay. Uh, if it has zeros, uh, if it has zero solutions, the system is called uh, inconsistent. If it has one or infinitely many solutions, um, it's a consistent set of, of equations. Um, this particular system has infinitely many uh, solutions of the form um, x is equal to minus 2t minus 2, uh, y is equal to t plus 5, and z is equal to t. Um, you can verify that this is a solution by uh, making these substitutions n for x, y, and z and showing that both equations that form the system um, um, are, are hold to be true. Um, this is a, a general solution. Again, in this case, there are infinitely many. Um, uh, for t, any possible value, you know, take, take the value of t equal to 0, x equal minus 2, y equal 5, z equal to 0. That is a solution of both equations, x equal minus 2 plus y equal 5 plus 0 is equal to 3. And then we'd have 
minus 4x plus 5 plus 0 is equal to 1. Um, let t have any other value. Um, and uh, the corresponding x, y, z triplet would also be a, a, a solution to, to both equations. Um, we want to look at this concept of um, 0, 1, or infinitely many solutions uh, uh, geometrically for some second order systems. So let me actually erase the board here. And the first case we'll look at is this system, x minus y is equal to 1, and then x plus y is equal to 3. Um, we can actually uh, plot these, you know, solve for y. Here we'd have y is equal to x minus 1. y is, you know, um, uh, y is equal to uh, x minus 1. If I plot that line at x equal to 0, y is going to be equal to uh, minus 1. Minus 1, so that would be a point on the line. At y equal to 0, x is 1. So this is uh, corresponds to this line, or our first equation, x minus y is equal to 1. And then uh, um, you know, for from the second equation, we'd have y is equal to three minus three minus x to three y is equal to three minus x. So when x is equal to three, y is going to be equal to zero. Uh, when uh, x is equal to two, y will be equal to one. That's actually a point on this other line as well. So the second line is, is actually going to look like that. So the second line here corresponds to the second equation, x plus y is equal to 3. So th these two lines intersect. They intersect actually at the point 2, 1. So again, with x equal to 2 and y equal to 1, 2 minus 1 is 1. 2 plus 1 is equal to 3. So um, a solution to this system of equations is x equal to 2, y equal to 1. And indeed, that's actually the only solution to this particular system of equations. Okay, so that system has, has one solution. Um, another example would be x plus y is equal to 4, and x plus y is equal to 2. Uh, this system of equations actually has no solution. And if you plotted the corresponding lines, um, they're actually parallel. And they never intersect. This is the x plus y equal 4 line. So when y is equal to four, uh, 0, x would be equal to 4. And then this other one is the x plus y is equal to 2 line. Again, with y equal to 0, um, x would be equal to 2. Then similarly, with x equal to 0, we'd have y is equal to 2. On the other line, with x equal to 0, we'd have y is equal to 4. So these are, these are two parallel lines. They, they never intersect. There are no values of x and y that, that um, are points on both lines. Okay. So that would be an example of a system that has no solution, uh, a system that has infinitely many solutions is minus 6x plus 2y is equal to minus 8, and 3x minus y is equal to 4. Um, these are actually two different equations for the same line. So um, with x equal to 0 here, um, uh, y is going to be equal to minus 4. So that's going to cross intercept down here. And with y equal to 0, we get x is going to be what? 4 thirds would be this point here. Um, but actually, both these equations are graphs uh, correspond to the same line. So um, any point that's on uh, one line is actually on the other line. Um, the general solution, the parameterized solution, 
is if we let x equal to t and solve for y, we get y is equal to 3t minus 4. So any value of, of t here, uh, let t equal to 0, so x equal to 0, then y is equal to minus 4. Um, that's actually, uh, uh, actually, I wrote this wrong, it should be minus 6x plus 2y is equal to minus 8 for these two to be the same. Now if we let uh, t equal to 0 or x equal to 0, then uh, the first solution, the first equation is true when y is equal to minus 4. And similarly for the second equation, when x is uh, equal to t, which is 0, y is equal to minus 4. So the negative of minus 4 is a positive 4 is also a solution to that equation. So any possible value of t here, um, uh, uh, corresponding, uh, we can find the corresponding value of y, and those are points that lie on, on both lines. So this is a system of equation that has infinitely many solutions. Now, <coughs> if we extend this to the case of uh, equations with three, uh, three unknowns, you know, x, y, and z, um, the, the corresponding equation actually represents a plane. Now, the planes could intersect in a single point. If you think about uh, uh, two walls that, that meet in your house and the floor, you think of the two walls and the, and the floor as being uh, three different planes. They, they only have a, a common point of intersection, that, that corner, and that's, um, that would be a single solution. Uh, there'd be no solution if all three planes were uh, uh, parallel but non-overlapping and, and never intersected. There would be uh, no solution uh, in that case. Um, even if you had two of the planes that were parallel and the, and the third plane cut through both of them, there, there would, wouldn't be a common point on all three planes, and so no solution. Um, and you could have infinitely many solutions. Um, you know, if uh, the planes intersected in a line, you know, if you think about, um, you know, this being one plane, this being another plane being like this, standing back in that direction and, and intersecting here on a line. Okay, Think of this as a common axis and this is like a paddle, paddle wheel and then um, another plane you know, extending that way. Sorry, my, my artwork, artwork is so poor. You know, we could have multiple planes actually uh, intersecting on a line and infinitely many points on that line so there'd be infinitely many solutions. Um, the planes could all be coincident, and so you'd have an, an infinite plane of solutions if all three equations were actually different equations for, for the same plane. Okay, So um, we're going to discuss um, how to solve systems of equations to determine whether there are no solutions or a single solution or, or um, you know infinitely many solutions. Uh, but before we do that, I, I want to talk about uh, um, the, the, and define what's known as the augmented matrix. Um, this will allow us to use slightly simpler no notation than our, our uh, system of equations notation. So if we have the following system of equations, so I'll write a system of equation that involves uh, three unknowns, and in this particular case, I'll have uh, three equations and three unknowns. Okay. And then the, the third equation is 3x minus 2z is equal to 5. Of course, coefficient of the y term is 0 here in the third equation. The augmented matrix. consist of the coefficient matrix, which are just the coefficients, 2, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1. It's a second. There are the coefficients of the um, second equation. And then the third equation has coefficients of 3 times x, 0 times y, minus 2 times z. And then we augment the coefficient matrix with the constant column vector here. So minus 1, 
0, and 5. And typically use square brackets to surround the numbers that make up our, our augmented matrix. So this is the augmented matrix that corresponds to this particular uh, system, linear system of uh, equations. And then so um, in the next video, I'll show you how to, to use um, the augmented matrix to actually find solutions to the, the system of equations.